Here we go. Now, how is everyone doing tonight? Hello, Positively Nanny, and hello, uh, Breda. How are you? Welcome, welcome, welcome. So, now, um, let me say hello to everyone else. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Angela. I am a newborn care specialist. I am also a career nanny, and I am a new parent educator. Most of my content on Facebook, all across social media, is about new parents, about toddlerhood, babyhood, questions that mom and dads ask, the, the things that I go through with my nanny life, so uh, with my nanny kid uh, and other kids that I take care of. So, you know, I try to keep it as real as possible, and I try to uh, let you know how I feel because a lot of things, a lot of, I get a lot of, oh, you're so special. You're so perfect. You're so this. I'm not perfect. I have feelings too. I get frustrated. I get upset. Yes, all of that happens. But uh, so I try to keep it real with you because I know as a mom, you want to know what's going on. You want to know some somebody that's going to tell it to you for real, for real. So I'm going to be that person. Now, tonight, we're going to talk about a video that I put out uh, earlier today. Um, if you haven't seen it, it's uh, it's a reel. It's on my, uh, it's a reel and a video on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. It's about my nanny kid. Uh, yesterday, we got to play dolls. She's never really played with dolls. She got a doll from Love Every but I think she was too young to realize what the doll was for or what, you know, to care for it. So she kind of picks it up, looks at it, and then tosses it away. But yesterday, I'm going to show you the dolls that I brought. Because you all, if you have seen my videos, you know that I use my baby dolls for my uh, some of my videos. These are the baby dolls. Let me hold them up because uh, this green... And go like this. So these are the baby dolls that I took to work with me on yesterday. And baby girl was playing with the dolls. And she gravitated towards this doll. Now on the video, you'll see her playing with this doll a lot. She very rarely picked up this doll. If you're looking at the at the video, you think, oh, well, she's playing with the black doll and not the white doll. But in truth, because I know her, she was playing with this doll because the zipper. She's a she's a zipper person, a, a, a zipper baby. Anything that zips, she wants it. And even though this one has a zipper, it's harder to maneuver but she gravitated towards this one first. But I also know that she likes bright colors. And even though this is a solid bright color, her favorite color is red. Everything is red. You ask her what color is red. I said, no, that's not red. What color is it? And then she tells me the color. So uh, I know that she is playing with this doll because of the zipper and the color. And before you get started, no, this is not going to be one of those those uh, those conversations uh, about race. Uh, this is an observation and my conclusion. My conclusion was she was playing with that doll because of the colors and because of the zippers. If you look at the video closely, you see, keep seeing her zipping and unzipping this baby doll. She keeps going up and down and pulling it apart and all that. She likes this doll because of the zippers, not because of the color of the baby's skin. Also, um, I know notice one thing. 
because she's 22 months now, 21 months. Yeah, she's 21 months now. Because of COVID, she was born in 2020. And because of COVID, her parents are very COVID conscious. And she was, we've had no play dates, maybe one. Yeah, one that I can remember. And she got sick at that play date and she hadn't been back to another play date. So because of that, we haven't had, she hasn't had anybody to model to her how to play with baby dolls because she hasn't been interested in them. She hasn't had anybody to have her to say, okay, well, let's feed the baby doll or let's change the baby doll's pamper or let's do this. None of that. She's an only child. But when I gave her these dolls, I let her play. When I give kids toys, I just let them play. I don't say, well, you have to play with it this way or you have to play with it that way. I let them explore to figure it out. If they ask me for help, I will put the puzzle together or put the, the, the blocks in the place or build a tower or whatever the case may be. She is a loner. I've taught her to be independent. I've taught her to play independently. So when she plays, she creates her own model of play. It's not a follow these directions. She does it on her own. So when she's, while she's doing it on her own, when she picked up these dolls, the first thing she asked me was bottle, bottle, bottle. I said, you just drank all your milk because she has these, these uh, bottles with the sippy lid to them. So we recycled her bottles. She said, bottle, baby bottle, baby bottle. So I gave her a bottle and she said, bottle, bottle. So she asked for another one and I gave her two bottles. Well, she double fisted it. She gave one the bottle to, to the baby and then she went and gave the other bottle to the baby. I said, are you going to feed the other baby? She went over got that baby uh stuck the ba bottle in the baby's mouth for about two seconds and came back to the baby doll that she liked she unzipped and zipped and zipped and she hugged the baby it, it it would just amaze me that she knew exactly what to do with the baby and she knows this because of how we have raised her how we have treated her She's had no example as to how to treat a baby. She's had no example of uh, what to do with a baby doll, how to play with the baby doll, how to hold the baby doll. Because if you look at the end, she's holding the baby upside down by the foot. She's dragging them around by the arms. She's not holding the baby like you would normally, uh, that, like we would hold the baby. But she is caring for the baby. She's making sure the babies are fed. She's making sure the baby, you know, is, she's trying to change the pamper. She's taking, trying to take the clothes off so she can change the pamper. That lets me know that the things that I have taught her mom and dad, the things that I have taught uh, her were good moral values so that when she plays, she knows what to do. And I pose the question to you, if your child never played with a baby doll and you gave them a baby doll to play with, what would they do? Are they going to nurture it or are they just going to fling it, you know, like she did the first when she first encountered a doll. She just looked at it and flung it back over there with the stuffed animals as if, hey, you know, it's another toy. It's a stuffed animal to her because it was a soft plushie. Uh, baby doll. It wasn't one like this or this that actually looks like a baby doll that's dressed in baby clothes. So when she sees babies, she'll say baby, baby, baby. As we walk through the, you know, the streets, going to the park in the strollers, but she's never played with one. So it just totally shocked me as I observed her and it let me know we're raising her to have to, for, with kindness. We're raising her to be nurturing. Um, and, you know, not all women, believe it or not, have a nurturing side. 
That's why some women choose not to have babies. But those of us who do choose to have babies and, you know, we don't always get it right. We don't always, you know, we make mistakes. I made mistakes. I had my children young. Um, my first one I had at 21. My last one I had at 24. So I had like literally stair steps, 87, 88, and 90. That's when I had my babies. And I know that I had a home daycare and I had them joining the home daycare so that they can learn how to change a pamper. They can learn how to uh, comfort a baby because I personally wanted them to be dads when they grew up. I wanted them to know how to take care of a baby and not just depend upon mom because those first few weeks and even beyond that, mom needs help. It's not just, this is mama's child. You, you know, you the mama, you breastfeeding, so you take care of the baby. No, I wanted them to actively participate in raising their child from baby on up. How to hold them, how to birth them, how to feed them, how to, to comfort them, how to get them to go to sleep. My youngest son, he doesn't have children yet. But out of all three of my sons, he was the one who figured it out. Oh, I just did this. I did that. And, I did, and he went to sleep just like that. And I was like, okay, so Mr. Sleep Trainer, he knew how to uh, make faces and do all this stuff with kids that my other two would do occasionally, but he was always there and on it. If I needed a, a day off or I needed a, a break or I had another appointment with someone else and I got a babysitting job, I would send him because he was, you know, on top of it. And they learned from me in my home daycare how to be, uh, how to take care of children. I can't say that I taught them how to be fathers, but I hope that. I was an example as a mother, how to take care of children as a home daycare provider and one who was a nanny when they were little. I hope that they learn from me what to do and what not to do. Um, right now, I have four grandchildren waiting on number five to be born between now and October the 7th. No, October 1st. <clears throat> so any day now, I'm waiting on number number five to be born. But I'm praying uh, that I have instilled within them enough values, enough uh, kindness and love and common sense of what to do with their children. And so that's why I'm asking you, what type of child are you raising? What do you do to ensure that your child will grow up to be a productive citizen? Now, this kind of ties into two weeks ago, because um, I, was, I was not here last week. I was not with you all last week. I had a 24-7 job uh, that I just got off of uh, last night. Yeah. Today's Tuesday. Yeah, last night was my last night with that job. But I am here this week. I wish there was a way I could tell you all. I'm not going to be here this week because I'm working. Because uh, most of you all know that I work overnight. So uh, sometimes my jobs are early. Sometimes they're 24-7. So it just depends upon the, the family as to what their needs are, as to you know when I work. But I'm here tonight. So... If you have any questions, uh, please put them into the chat box. Uh, hello, Pilot Jones. How are you? I'm going to see what um, I have comments here on TikTok. Uh, tips for a 10th grader that are quiet. Okay. Happy reborns. Okay, 10th graders are not my, uh, 
uh, not my specialty. Uh, so giving you tips, I'm trying to even remember when my kids were in the 10th grade, but none of mine were quiet. Um, hmm. Let me grab my pen. I'm going to write you uh, your name down. And I'm going to send you a message. Uh-oh. 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 My charger just fell. Um, but I'm going to write down your name. And I'm going to send you... I have a couple of nanny friends who are, do specialize in older kids. And uh, how to get them to talk. And how to get them to... What is my pen? Um, because, like I said... I don't specialize in that, but as I always tell you, um, if I have, if I know somebody who does, I will send them your way. I don't know everything, but I try to uh, get you the help that you need. Let's see. Let me write this down. Okay, I wrote that wrong. Happy reborns for. Okay, I will try to get you the help that you need, um, because, like I said, I don't specialize in that, so I couldn't tell you um, what to do with that. Hello, Lexi. How are you? How are you doing? Okay. Hi, Blossoms, Mona. Good to see you. I hadn't seen you in a while. Thank you for joining me. Okay, so anybody want to answer the question as to what type of children that you are helping, are raising, are helping to raise? I know uh, a lot of nannies have joined me. What do you instill within your children that you care for to make them productive citizens? How do you nanny them? 20-month-old that hits... And I'm having a hard time getting him to eat real food. Okay, so I have a series on hitting. Uh, I'm trying to see. Hold on, let me sit back so I can see what your name is. Um, I have a series on hitting. Children hit out of frustration. They hit from seeing someone else hit, they hit from being hit. And a lot of times it's frustration. A lot of times it's uh, playing and you have to stand firm. It's gonna take patience, it's gonna take practice and it's gonna take consistency. I work with a 21 month old now and we're in potty training. And when soon as she gets on the potty, and I'm sitting beside her, she reaches out and tries to hit me in my face. And I grab her arm and I said, no, we don't hit. I don't like it. It's not nice. You can hit on your legs. You can hit on your arms, but you may not hit me or anyone else. It's not nice. And I keep repeating that to her. And today <laughs> she tried to swung at me and I caught her by the wrist. I said, no. She said, hit yourself, hit yourself, hit yourself. I said, yes, you may hit yourself. So what I'm saying to her is going in, but at 20 months old, it's hard for them to regulate uh, and, and to control that impulse of lashing out or hitting. And she thinks it's funny, even though it's not funny when the other person is getting hit because she has a pretty good swing. Uh, but it's not funny to her. It's funny because she's laughing and she thinks it's fun. But I'm trying to get her to understand hitting is not okay. It's not fun for the other person that's being hit. And it's sinking in. The words that I'm saying are sinking in, but as with any 20-month-old, you're going to have to keep repeating, keep repeating, keep repeating. And that's why I said it's going to take, um, it's, it's going to take patience and practice and 
consistency. You're going to have to say it. You're going to sound like a broken record before it's all over with. But keep saying, keep repeating, keep repeating, keep repeating. It's getting in there. If they're repeating the words back to you, they understand what you are saying. But the impulse is so strong and they, they are very impulsive and they cannot control that impulse to just, you know, hit. Whether it's in frustration, whether it's in fun, whether it's because they are being hit uh, and they think it's okay. But it's not okay. And you're going to have to keep be consistent with that. We don't hit in our home and he does not go to child care outside of the home. It's a natural instinct. It's a natural instinct. It's it's once they hit and they get a reaction, it's like, ooh, that's something new. Let me try that again. Impulse. They may not have meant to hit you the first time. It just happened. And because they got a, a rise out of you, because they got a reaction out of you, because sometimes kids want attention. And whether it's good attention or bad attention, uh, it, 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 whether they get it from you from doing something good or doing something bad, they got your attention. So then let me do repeat that because I'll get their attention again. And each time they get you all riled up, they're pushing your buttons. Oh, that's exciting. Oh, let me do that again. They keep repeating it. So calmly. Tell them, I don't like this. Hitting hurts. But when you when they hit and you go, I said don't hit. Then you do you understand me? You know, because all of us, all the time, we are not always on hi baby. Uh yes, mommy doesn't like that. No, we're not always like that. We are frustrated. He's usually frustrated when it happens. That's his way of expressing his frustration. But it's still not right. If he's going to hit, um, give him something to hit. He, you can hit your stuffed animal. You can hit the uh, a punching bag. My son, I used to, I don't know how old you are, but back in the day, they probably still have them. They had these like blow up clowns where you hit them and they tilt over and they come back up. It was kind of like a little boomerang. Uh, and when he got frustrated, he got angry. I mean, we went through like 20 of those clowns. But I told him, you can hit the clown. And he would go in there and beat up on the clown and get all of his frustration out. So give him a place to go and hit. At 20 months old, they, they their understanding is not... Um, it's better than when they were at 12 months, but they still, like I said, they're still impulsive. So give him a place to go and hit. And when he tries to hit you, take him to the place where he can hit. You can hit this or give him the toy that he can hit. You can hit this soft toy, but you may not hit people. You may not hit me or daddy or your brother or whoever the person is, you know, that he's trying to hit. It's not okay. Let them know it's not okay. Um, now, as far as the eating is concerned, uh, you say you're having problems with getting him to eat real food. Um, is he not eating food or when you say real food, you mean nutritious food, a uh, food that you deem nutritious. I put it like that. Let me, let me ask that question. Okay. Lexi says, great. How are you? Hope to see you for your anniversary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you can make it. Uh, I previously made all of his purees. He's struggling to switch. Um, the chewing motion. If he's if if your 
child is is um uh, struggling is a true emotion um uh, and when you say struggling i say that but now let me let me back up because when you say struggling is he struggling like in choking on the food or and i shouldn't say choking gagging because if he's gagging that's a protective reflex if he's actually choking on the food that's totally different uh and switching from parades um i had some one-year-olds that were having problems switching from parades to uh, chunks of food so i continued the parade but i would put uh cooked small chunks so it'd be a little bit more grit and it took some time but i gradually got them off of the purees and into whole food i would like that i would add little chunks i started with you know cheerios um little um i would dice up apples and cook the steam them so it's like nice and mushy so it gives them something to chew and i would sit in front of them and put it in my mouth and say you need to chew see see how i'm chewing chew 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 and they would go i said yes chew 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 and eventually they learn how to use their tongues to maneuver the food around so that they could chew and when they swallowed they didn't gag again patience consistency and practice for taking uh them from purees to whole foods i previously made all these phrases okay is it okay for my one year old to still wake up each hour at night i uh, know your one year old should be sleeping but is let me ask you this is your one year old teething that's the question and how close is he to one as opposed to two because if he's like 18 19 months old the two-year-old molars start coming in around that time. They may not break through the skin, but it takes a while for them to come in. And even when they're coming in, just think about your wisdom teeth, if you have wisdom teeth. Think about that. Your wisdom teeth can take months to come in, but they hurt before they come in because they are growing and pushing downward on your gums and it hurts. And if your molars are hurting, your, your wisdom teeth are hurting, it's probably affecting your ears. It's probably giving you a headache because anytime my face aches or I have a toothache, all of this hurts and I can't sleep. So let me ask you that. Is your child teething as opposed to him just waking up just because he wants to wake up? Let me see if I have any questions here. Um, how to deal with the terrible twos my daughter screams all day yells and kicks um, those terrible twos are <laughs> kind of start out uh, early I model words and they get to a point of frustration of if you give in to the screams, they keep screaming. I start early when the 20 month old that I'm working with, 21 month old that I'm working with now, she's in a screaming stage as in screaming for excitement. And she makes this weird noise when she gets frustrated and it's, it's very irritating. But if she gets your attention, she's like, okay, she looks i mean literally she watches me to see if i'm going to react to her noise to see if i'm going to say hmm okay you're getting on my last nerve uh what can i do to make you stop and i'll ask her what do you need use your words because she has excellent vocabulary for a 21 month old she 
talks in two, three word sentences, but you get the gist of what she wants. And I'll ask her what she needs. And I do it in a calm voice. And I have to remind myself, sometimes you're going to have to stop and breathe before you say something to that child. You're going to have to stop and breathe and go, okay, get it together. All right, calm. Because if I'm not calm, she's going to take advantage of it and she's going to run with it. And we're going to hear this noise all day long. And it's going to really work my nerves all day long. So stop what you're doing, breathe, get yourself under control, and then ask, what would you like? What do you want? Do you need some water? Do you need to, you know, to take a nap? What? Ask them. I talk to them uh, like they're grown. I, I never do baby talk with babies. I always talk to them in full sentences. That's how they learn language acquisition. So talk to her. Um, the yelling and the kicking, if she starts kicking, I just leave them there. Okay. It's okay for you to be angry. It's okay for you to be upset. And I'm going to let you sit right here. And I will be over here when you get done. And we can talk. Uh, I let them get the anger out. I let them get the frustration out. I acknowledge that they are frustrated, first of all. So they can get it all out. And... Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. I'm not going to tell you that. Lie to you and tell you, oh, that's going to work. No, it sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But each time that you react in that manner and you don't get angry and let her push your buttons, she'll see this is not effective. I know that they are upset. I know that they need redirection. I will ask, okay, so I have this red dog over here. Do you want to play with the red dog? Or that's when I bring out uh, Play-Doh or calming toys, uh, sensory books, because sometimes it's it's like uh, kids who are highly sensitive and highly uh, sensitive on sensories, I try to calm them. Uh, water. Water does the trick every time. We have a sand and water play uh, table outside. I pour water in the table and let her play in the water, splash in the water, and everything else goes away. All the frustration, all the anger goes away. If I can't get outside, I take her to the sink, to the bathroom seat, put her up on the step stool. Let's wash hands. I let her play with her hands in the water. I'll sit her up on the... the uh, up on the, the, the counter in the bathroom and let her splash her feet. I put like this much water into the, the sink and I let her splash her feet in the water. Water sends, it, it's, it's like calming to most of the toddlers that I have worked with. It is calming. And anytime I let them play with the water, it calms them. And it's like that temper tantrum that was way up here, it comes all the way down here. Now, if she's up here and you go up there with her, oh, that's not, that, mm -mm, don't do that. If she's up here, try your best to stay down here. I know on the inside, you way up here, even though she's still here. On the inside of you, you way up here because you are over it already. Try to stay down here. It takes practice, it takes patience, it takes consistency. I didn't get this way overnight. It took, and even now, I have to remind myself, breathe, Angela. <sighs> okay, now, she's tired, it's nap time, she's hungry because she eats before nap time, her blood sugar levels are falling apart, Give her some food, give her a nap. Just concentrate on getting the food in her, getting her to bed, and you can have a break. And sometimes that's how I talk to myself. Just get the food in her, one step in front of the other. I know, okay, in 20 minutes, she's going to be in bed. She's going to be asleep. I rest assured in that thought, which helps me to stay calm 
and to endure her kicking, her screaming, her yelling, her, you know, just making that noise that annoys everybody in the house. Just think 20 minutes from now, just 20 minutes from now. Okay, 15 more minutes. All right. And sometimes I am sitting there because I have had, you know, I work overnight. I haven't had enough rest. If both of us are on 10, I'm like, okay, calm down to eight, calm down to seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Get her in bed. She will go to sleep on her own. She'll cry for like two minutes and she's knocked out. And I go in and I'm just like, oh, Lord Jesus, I made it through that. Oh, uh, and I calm my nerves. I calm my nerves. I give you a cup of tea, something to eat, but you're going to have to be consistent with her and stay on a five at least when she's on 10 and work through it. Bring out a toy, redirect her because she's only two. Redirection, play in the water. If you keep doing what you're doing, then it's probably, uh, and it's not working, try something different. Try something new. And I'm telling you, find your still small voice. And that's S-T-E-E-L, because when I talk to them and I'm like, okay, this is what we're going to do. I don't say, okay, here's what we're going to do. Because when you get all excited and, and agitated, your child feels what you're feeling. And it makes them more agitated and more excited and more just an explosion. But if you stay here, talk calmly. Try breathing exercises with her. Uh, the one-year-old that I work with, we do breathing exercises. I started that when she was a baby. When she would just cry, she still has a witching hour. But that's a topic for another day. Uh, we'll come back next week and talk about the toddler witching hour because hers never stopped. Um, but yeah, that's something that you can do. Okay, hold on. How to handle terrible twos. Advice for moms who work full-time with baby full-time. I feel like I don't give her enough of me. Mom guilt. Um, yeah, I've been there and done that. Um, as far as my kids, I work 12 hour days. I had to leave, I had to be work, I work from seven to seven, which means I had to leave home at six. And I didn't get home until eight. So I missed all of the day. And talk about mom guilt. Yeah, I felt that, been there, done that. But I know that I have to go to work so they can eat, so they can have a place to sleep, uh, so that they can have clothes and all the other necessities that it, just the basic necessities I need to work uh, to get them the wants. I need to work. Um, so you work full time. Okay. Kat, you, you work full time with the baby with you or is this you work full time? Okay. I work full time and with baby full time. I feel like I don't know. Oh, so you're working with the baby at home. Um, is there any way that you can get someone to come in for a couple of hours uh, and help you um, for a couple of hours a day so that you can focus on work and just knock it out? And then you have more time for her and not feel so guilty. Is there a way that you can do that? Um, you know, even if it's just if even if it's the afternoon 
uh, you have someone coming in after school. Um, cause I did a lot of after school babysitting when I was, uh, younger and, um, I would just, you know, a mother's helper and they would entertain the baby. I would, you know, get stuff done around the house. Uh, that, I would entertain the baby. They would get stuff done around the house that they needed to get done. And then they came back to focus on the baby. So is there any way you can do that? That way you get the opportunity to spend uh, direct time with your baby and you get your work done too. Is that possible? Just asking. Because, yeah, it can be, the mom guilt can be, been there, done that. Let me see if I have any. Um, questions over here. Uh, independence, empathy, and communication with my nanny boy six. Ah, okay, hold on. I must have missed something. Hold on, Braden. Hello, Fibro Nanny. How are you? Thank you for joining me. Hello, Unicorn Nanny. How are you all? Okay. The screaming, uh oh, the screaming will last for 45 minutes to an hour long. And obviously, when I don't tend to the screaming, she gets louder and louder. I have asked questions and it doesn't seem to work, but I will try water. Okay, try the water. Uh, do the parents appreciate you? Yes, my parents do appreciate me and they showed me their appreciation. Oh, yes, you work from home. Okay. Uh, I thought that I have your nanny tips written down. It's just so hard to trust people in your home. This is true. It is hard to trust people in your home. And then with COVID and everything, um, that's why you have to, uh, but with you being at home, uh, it's easier for you to see what's going on. Sorry, my eye is itching like crazy. Oh, it's probably tired. Okay. Um, yeah, it's hard to to have people in your home. I understand that feeling. Um, because I go into a lot of homes and I feel like, you know, at any given moment I'm being watched. And I'm like, okay, I know the cameras are in here. So, and and I, I just try to be me and comfort them and talk to them and let them know I got this. Um, I don't try to take over, but I do try to say, okay, uh, I can do this while you go do that. If you like me to do this while you do that. Or I can take the baby, you know, and go in the other room and play while you, you know, take care of your work. Things like that, suggestive. And they make the decision as to, you know, you hired me, you're paying for me, I'm here, let me do my job. I don't want to say that, but it pretty much I'm like, hello, I'm right here. This is why you hired me so that you can get work done. But I don't push like, okay, I need you to go to work so I can take care of the baby. You need you you hire me so that you know that you can work. Now go to work. That's not me. I gently suggest things. Um, because at the end of the day, I want the parents to feel comfortable while I'm there. I want them to know that I'm here to help, not to take over and run your life. I'm here to help. Uh, and we work together as a team. Okay, so Angela Reed says, uh, any tips to encourage babbling, ba ba da da, et cetera, for a five to six month old? She's still on the single syllables of ah. Okay, every day when you're doing tummy time, ba ba da da, music, 
try singing music because they would try to imitate uh, the words, wording in the song, songs that are repetitive, Wheels on the Bus, um, Five Little Monkeys, um, what other song is she, uh, Pop Goes the Weasel. I'm trying to think of the nursery rhymes that are repetitive, that have uh, the, what's that banana song? I like to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas, apples and bananas, uh, those types of songs. I always have them playing in the background because they help with language acquisition. Uh, I'm always saying mama, 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 dada, dada. And I'm always in that face. I do have a video about that too. If you look on my, uh, on my, uh, Instagram, or even my TikTok. I do have a video about that. So uh, check those out. I have a video about the babbling. And when they start, you know, and usually I'm like, I, I will clap their hands, mama, mama, as in when I do my syllables, mama, dada, baba. And when I start clapping their hands, it eventually they start saying mama dad it's kind of like pavlov's dog uh when they ring the bell he goes to eat the dog goes to eat yeah it's kind of that way uh but still every day all the time forecasting and babbling especially during tummy time babbling when they are engaged babble with them when you're on the changing table Babble with them when before you put them down to sleep, read books that have repetitive words, keep babbling with her. Uh, Tabitha Burr uh, says, I have an 11 month old fully breastfeeding, I'm trying to wean him off to formula. Do you, uh, you said fully breastfeeding, so you try, have you ever fed your baby with a bottle? Because if you are, if if you fed your baby with a bottle, uh, the way that we did it was we mixed the the breast milk with the formula, mostly breast milk, little formula, and just it was like 75, 25. And then a couple of weeks later, we went from um, to 50-50. Then we went from 75, from 25 to 75, and then full on formula. Uh, but at a year old, if your baby's 11 months old, are you weaning them to a form to a toddler formula, or are you weaning them to um, to whole milk? Because at 11 months old. I think at 12 months old, they can have whole milk. So let me know which is which. Are you weaning them to formula, to a toddler formula, or are you weaning them to uh, whole milk? Thank you. You're right. Uh, let's see. I thought of that. I have any tips. Okay. Thank you. Uh, you're right. I should bring in someone. Uh, some help other than Miss Rachel on YouTube. <laughs> okay. Yep, that might work. Let me see. Do I have any other questions? I don't think I have any other questions. I think I've seen all the questions. Okay. Tips to encourage babbling of us. Uh, Angela, I just answered your question. <laughs> music, use music, uh, nursery rhymes, um, things that will um, that are repetitive, that have like the wheels on the bus. Uh, use. Um, Babble to them while they're on a changing table. Babble to them while they're uh, engaged in tummy time. 
um, when whatever you're doing, babble, 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 talk, forecast, do the forecasting. Uh, always tell them, I'm getting ready to change your pamper. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I have a routine when they when I'm changing the diaper. I, I do the little piggies um, with their toes and just, you know, ba 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 while they're giggling and they're excited is when they're more likely to come out with other sounds. So when you get them on the changing table and they tickle their little tummy and they're laughing and ba 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 and they're laughing with you and whenever they make a sound yay encourage them yes you did it you said something oh great i also have a video uh on tiktok and i think i have it on facebook but i know i have it on tiktok and instagram about babbling uh so take a look at that um it might be on youtube too but take a look at it and uh check it out um it has some great information in there. Uh, let's see. Do I have any other questions? I don't see any other questions. If I don't have any other questions, I'm going to get off of here and get my day started for tomorrow uh, because I've got to do some uh, meal prep. Yeah, I know when kids go back to school, um, I'm starting this new uh, eating healthier. So I got to create my salads and get all my meal prep. Uh, I did my uh, overnight oats before I got on and they're in the refrigerator. And so tomorrow I can just grab one, throw it in my lunchbox and eat it at work. And I don't, I won't be stopping by Starbucks to get that sandwich or that coffee. So I'm trying to wean myself off of several different things. So I need to do go and do my meal prep. And um, if there are no more questions, let's see. I have one more. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you for joining me. Thank you all for joining me tonight. I will see you. Yes, I will be here next week. I don't have anything on next Tuesday night. Uh, so I will see you all next Tuesday night. Same time, same place. You all have a great week. Um, if you haven't watched the video that I talked about at the beginning of this video, uh, of this, uh, should I say, this live, go watch the video about the babies and the baby dolls. And think about what kind of child you're, you're raising. What are you instilling within your children that's going to make them productive citizens? What do you see in your children? Do some observations. See what you see in your children, their personality traits and uh, things that you want to instill within them. And uh, know that when you talk to them in that still small voice, it cal it's calming. When you find that still small voice, it's calming. So you're calming down and they're calming down. And it's and you are helping and setting the example of how to regulate their emotions. Not that they can't have emotions, but okay, I'm angry. I got it out. Now let me calm down. So thank you, lovely loves. Lovely loves food. Thank you for following me. Hi, Sarah. How are you? You caught me at the very tail end. I'm getting ready to go and do some meal prep. But thank you for joining me. I'll see you all next week. Same time, same place. And you all have a wonderful week. I'll see you next week.